Welcome back once again to brought to you by Lakewood's First and Ten, located at the corner of Mockingbird and Abrams in Dallas and named by D Magazine as the best sports bar in Dallas. Game Day Cloth, love your team, love your clothes. Uh, visit their store at, and PonyFans.com, the oldest, largest, and only free website dedicated to the SMU Mustangs and Pony fans everywhere. We are joined now by Junior Le Kelvin Beecham Jr. And now you are a uh, third year starter. You're on all these all conference lists. You're uh, nominated for awards. But when you signed out of Mejia, Texas, you were maybe 240. Some, and the uh, there. offensive line coach at the time, Ronnie Van Clark, I asked him about you because I didn't know who you were. I didn't know where Mejia was, really. Uh, the first thing he said was, what a great basketball player you were, <laughs> which is not the uh, most normal assessment you hear for a lineman. You hear that for you know guys like him, maybe. Right. Receivers, DBs, running backs. Were you so good at basketball that you actually thought about pursuing that in college instead of football? Basketball was my first love. Before anything else, basketball was my first love. Before I ever got the adrenaline pump from uh, football, basketball was where it was. So why the change of heart? Why did you end up going into football instead of basketball? I, I love the contact. I <laughs> love mean, the contact. <laughs> I mean, as an offensive lineman, you just got to love it. And that's what I love about football. I love the contact. And, I mean, it's contact basketball, but in football, you can just hit somebody in front of you, and that's, that's what I well, do. Well, that's true. That's true. Now, when you got here, uh, the former strength coach, Vic mm -hmm. Valoria, said that you basically had never lifted weights in your life before you got to Dallas. Is that true? Pretty much. All it was was flipping tires and uh, working on cars and, you know, doing a lot of stuff, mechanical type stuff, or just, you know, transmissions and lifting. You know, I mean, that's the type of lifting I did. No really structured, organized weight training. So as you started to grow into the lineman that you are now, how much of it was simply being an 18, 19-year-old guy and growing into your frame, and how much of it was hitting the weights for the first time? I think it's a little of both. It was, it was uh, you know, the work ethic was already there, but as far as knowing what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and even also when to get rest, because sometimes, you know, not knowing when to lift as a, as a young person and coming into an environment like this, you, you feel that you need to lift so much where you can catch everybody that you don't get enough rest for yourself. So, you know, one thing that I learned was also to lift hard, but also to rest at the same time. When Coach Jones and his staff got hired uh, three years ago, every, the first thing that people noticed was the ball's going in the air on almost every play. But from your point of view, on the offensive line, you're now playing in a two-point stance on, vert, on every snap, right? Right. How much of a transition, I mean, it seems like a minor thing to the people watching, but how much of a transition is that after you grow up playing in a normal three-point stance like every other lineman out there? Right, but I mean, uh, in high school, I, I did play in some two-point. And even when Coach Bennett was here as a scout team player, you know, I registered it that year. Um, I also played in a two-point stand. So it was a little mixture of both. So I knew how to play in it. It wasn't like it was completely different. So it was something that I could, I could find myself doing on, on a consistent basis. Everyone thinks of the run and shoot and thinks of all the passing numbers that Coach Jones' teams have put up over the years, both here and obviously when he was at Hawaii. But for the last two years, you've also had very good running backs. You got Zach Line this year. You had Sean Bray McNeil last year. How hard is it to run block when you're starting in a two-point stance that's designed to make you a more effective pass blocker because you can drop back quicker? Um, it's not as hard as everybody makes it out to be. You know, one thing that Coach Mack, um, Coach Clem, and Coach Jones showed us, he showed film NFL guys that they coached playing in two-point stances. In two-point stances, you can see exactly what's going on in front of you. In a three-point stance, you can still see, but you can't see the whole picture, the whole, you know, the whole defense of, right. of you know, what different things could happen. So the two-point stance makes it a little bit easier as far as seeing everything, but as far as having the, that initial burst, it's, it's a little bit more difficult to generate it. Speaking of those running backs, last year, Sean Ray McNeil became the first running back ever to go over 1,000 yards for Coach Jones in college. All right. This year, Zach Line is at 1,297 yards. Mm -hmm. Last year, he was a, an occasional blocking back. He'd come in on third and one or goal line situations. What did you see last year that gave you any indication that he had this kind of ability in him? Or did, he, did you see anything? I'm going to give you the specific game that I, show, that I saw that ability. It right. was Marshall, when we was down in Marshall last year. And um, it was two-minute drill. They were in a 3-2 defense. 
and we gave him the ball on a, on a, a, a draw play. And he took it for about 25 yards. He didn't take it to the house like Sean Brady might have. But he took it for 25 yards, and you saw some shiftiness. You saw the ability to break tackles. So it was something that we saw, you know, coming up that, you know, Zach would probably be the, the, the new running back after Sean Bray, you know, made that leap to the NFL. You, you look at those two running backs. Sean Bray's a little guy, mm -hmm. shifty, quick, changes directions really quickly. Mm -hmm. Zach is a big, strong guy who's very comfortable putting his shoulder down and running over somebody. Mm -hmm. Is it different for you guys up front blocking for two different kinds of backs, or is it you do your job the same every time and they got to adjust to the lanes that you create up front? Yeah, it, each back has its, has its pros and cons. Um, with with uh, Sean Bray, you know, if we had any type of crease, just the smallest crease, he could hit it, you know. And it, it, if you look at the UTEP game, it, the, the one he took to the house for like 74 yards, it was nothing there. But he saw like a little crease and took it to the house. But with Zach, we have to, I mean, we, we still block. I mean, we block the same. The blocking hasn't changed. But okay. the blocks take a little bit longer to develop sometimes. And, and Zach is able to, to read the blocks a little better than Sean Bray, in my opinion, and read the blocks and make, you know, plays happen where you wouldn't, you know, normally see a play with Sean because Sean Bray hits it so fast. By the same token, when you, you, you rotate those two running backs, mm -hmm. earlier this year when you were in New Orleans at Tulane, mm -hmm. you rotated quarterbacks. Uh, Coach Jones rotated Kyle Padron and J.J. McDermott mm -hmm. almost on every play for a while there. Does that make any difference to you in terms of their cadence or how quickly they get the ball out, their footwork? Not really. We, we do our jobs as offensive linemen. Half the time, you don't even look at the, the quarterback. You just hear, you know, dip your head in, hear the call, and come on out and, you know, block the guy that's in front of you. So, I mean, it really wasn't too much of a difference. I mean, we just know, you know, anytime, I mean, when it got to that point where he was rotating quarterbacks, we knew, hey, we, we better pick it up because something, <laughs> it might be us right. coming out of here the next time. You know, like uh, Crawford talked about earlier, that game was one of those games where we played bad, played, didn't play well at all, all across the board. So, you know, when we saw that change, we knew, um, you know, we better pick it up and get things done. Coaches and players talk about offensive line probably more than any other position group on the team, relying on the timing and the chemistry of being used to the guy on either side of you. This year, you got a new guy on your right hip. Bryce Tennyson slid over to left guard. Right. How long did that take? I mean, I know you've been in practice with him for three years because you signed the same year, didn't right. you? Right. And you've been working with him and you know him well, but how long did it take to get used to playing next to him? It really didn't take long at all. You got to realize I, I was roommates with Bryce my, right. my freshman year. So it really wasn't like we had chemistry problems at all. Um, Bryce is a, is a lot more uh, quicker than the Rebus. You know, there's a, there's a diff, different, different body type. So stunts were able to be passed off a lot quicker. Um, you know, not down to Josh at all. I love Josh to death, and I can't wait till he get back because I know Bryce want to go back over to the right side. But Bryce brings, you know, the, the, the zone that we run a lot. We're able to get the edge a lot faster because Bryce is able to get and, and cut off that, you know, cut off that three, three technique where Josh would be able to kick him out. So it's, it's a lot of different, different things, but it, it really didn't take us long at all to, to mix and, and to get things going like we, like we needed to. You mentioned Josh Laribas. He's supposed to come back next year, mm -hmm. which will give you six seniors, which is a rarity. It's a luxury for an offensive line. Right. But you guys have really grown up together. Right, that's true. You know, all of you were freshmen together. Some of you were too skinny. Some of you were too heavy. None yeah. of you were strong enough. Right. Now you look like a full-blown Division One offensive line, and you're getting Josh back, so there'll be yeah. at least six of you. Yeah. How good can this line be next year once you have all your horses back? I think this line could be the best line that ever came to SMU. Seriously. Really? Seriously. I no joking, no... That's you know, a big statement. There have been some I, good lines I, coming I through. I understand that. I understand that very well. I think that could be, this could be the, the best line that has ever come to, come to us. No so doubt. what will be better next year than, it, than you have this year? I mean, you've done well this it's year. Done well, but it's always, it's always room to improve. We, we're never satisfied. That's one thing we learned with Coach Clem, one thing we learned with Coach Mack when he was here. Never be satisfied. We're always finding ways to get better. And, you know, by the time we finish, I think we will be the best offensive line that has ever come through us. You know, I make bold statements. I made a bold statement at the football lunch, and I made very bold statements. And yes, I think you did. I, 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 I try my best to live up to it. All right, fair enough, fair enough. And then I know, obviously, you don't spend any time looking down to the other end of the line, mm -hmm. but this year you have Kelly Turner in as the new right guard. All right. I know you know him. He's in your class as well. All right. You see him on film. All right. How have you, uh, what do you think of the way he's performed this year? He's done phenomenal. He's, you know, 
picked it up. I mean, you know, we both, as you know, like you said, we, we've all grown together. Um, Kelly was one of those guys that wasn't in the mix at, at first. But Kelly is probably the strongest offensive lineman we have, you know. Right. I'm talking about cock strong, stronger than most people on the team. Right. So it, it wasn't so much, you know, the physical play, but it was more the mental thing. And he's fixed it. And he's found a way to, to you know, get the plays right, make sure he's making the right reads and doing everything he has to do. And he's played well, played, you know, everybody's chasing Kelly right now because last year he had 19 knockdowns in one game. So everybody's trying to chase that mark. So he's, he's done, it, done his fair share this year. All right. He has played well so far, but you do have two more games to go. When we come back, we're going to talk to both Richard and Kelvin about the conference championship game this Saturday in Orlando. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back on Pony Fans Live. <laughs> 